Donna Bush here with your government news brief on CID television on this Thursday. A major exercise took place on Thursday morning involving hazard management Cayman Islands and more than 12 schools in the Cayman Islands, including Kim and Brack. CARIB Wave 23 is a UNESCO initiative that involved various islands in the Caribbean region on Thursday. What we're doing is we're trying to focus on the schools and what we want to do is make sure that they know what to do, how to do it and when to do it. So what, cause what we saw after the 2020 earthquake is that a lot of people started running to the schools to try and pick up their children because they weren't comfortable that the schools knew what to do for the earthquake and tsunami um, the risk. So today we just wanted to come in, observe and provide recommendations so that schools are confident that they know what to do and they can communicate this with, the, with their parents so the parents don't come down to the schools and something does happen, that they actually have confidence that the schools know what to do when there is a tsunami or earthquake threat. The annual exercise allows HMCI officials to observe, assess hazards and provide recommendations to local school leaders about their level of preparation. Going forward, we're doing a lot more of this. We're going into more schools. We're looking at their plans and we're following up to make sure that they're communicating with the parents in terms of you know, what they are actually doing at school and that they know what they're doing. And parents can be, feel confident that, the, that their children are safe at school with the teachers. The purpose of the exercise each year is to advance tsunami preparedness efforts in the Caribbean and adjacent regions. As just mentioned, schools will now review their tsunami response plans and procedures. Meantime, the public is encouraged to always be prepared for any hazards. If you have any questions, you can email hmci at gov.ky or go online to kmanprepared.gov.ky. Also making our headlines this Thursday, today the formal mental helpline is being rebranded and a new logo being sought as part of the changes. We are rebranding and we are going to be known as KMind. Um, and essentially we've been able to do that because of a very generous grant from the R3 non-profit organisation, a charitable force in this community that helps the community and gives back and, and really encourages the, the people, our, us, to, to stand up, take responsibility and go ahead and be innovative. We have three professional logos that we whittled down from 15 in total, but we also have three from uh, a student at Lehman Scott High School in Cayman Brack, a student at Clifton Hunter High School and a student from the Let Me Live Foundation. We can only choose one. We need your help to do that. The top three student designers will receive a small cash prize and the funding from R3 now means K-Mine can be accepted to the Befenders Worldwide Organization, which allows persons to seek help wherever they are in the world. But with that, we also get to access the Samaritan training. This is phenomenal because this means that for the last three years, our line has been run by mental health professionals. This does not need to be run by mental health professionals. We've been very lucky that we've had a very committed small cadre of folks who have given us their time so general, generously. But we want, to, we want to reach out to the public. We want to get the public involved and we want to train you. And we want to take K-Mind, the formerly known as the Mental Health Helpline, we want to take it to a more reachable service. Now to vote for your favourite K-Mind logo, you can uh, do so this Saturday, the 25th of March. As those involved move from location to location across the island, starting at cost you less from 10 a.m., then they'll move on to Caymana Bay uh, from 12.30 p.m., and then finally at A.L. Thompson and Savannah location from 2.30 p.m. Tonight, there's a 30% chance of rainfall and sea conditions are improving with moderate wave heights up 3 to 5 feet. Uh, the outlook over the next two days is for light to moderate winds and seas by Friday morning as the pressure over the Western Caribbean weakens. And that is your weather forecast. Now, remember, you can get more details on our local weather conditions online at weather.gov.ky or check out the Weather Services Facebook page. That ends today's news brief here on CIG Television. I'm Donna Bush. Have a great evening.